Hi everybody, this is my first corset review for August. If you haven't been able to tell from all my frizzy hair because it's super hot and humid outside. So what better time to review a mesh corset? So today I'm wearing the Jolie Short Corset by Glamorous Corset in black mesh. So here's the front, the side, the back, and the other side. When I took the measurements of this corset right out of the box, it was identical to the Jolie corset that I had reviewed a couple of years ago. So that's good, it has consistency between the measurements. However, because this is mesh, it does expand in the waistline, and it also expands uh, at the top and bottom as well, because uh, the fishnet style netting, it can expand a little bit. Um, so with that in mind, when I measured this out of the box, the waistline was true. Now it is about an inch bigger than the label says. So just as a refresher, for the original measurements, when I measured it out of the box, it was 22 inches in the waistline. The underbust uh, measured straight across here was 28 inches. Now it's a little bit more than that, about 28 and a half. And at the hip here, it was 31 inches. So it came with a six inch rib spring and a nine inch hip spring. Now uh, at the very, very top, because it sweeps up, there's plenty more room if you have any back squidge, as well as if you have slightly a fuller lower hip, then this isn't gonna be a problem. Because it cuts up and then down again, the bottom part is relatively freer than if it were cut straight across. Uh, this, I won't say it acts exactly as a fulcrum, but it is a little bit more flexible in that if you have a little bit more <laughs> in the back, it, it will be able to flex and go over this part. The center front of this corset is 9 inches. At the princess seam here, from under the bust to the top of the lap here, is 6.5 inches. 3.5 are from the waist up, and the waistline I measured from the bottom of the waist tape, and 3 inches from the waist down. At the side seam here, it is 9.5 inches, so you can see that it dips down a little bit lower on the side seam here than it does in the front here. And then in the very back, because it has, uh, it comes down both a little bit lower and also it has a slightly high back, um, it's the longest in the center back at 10 inches. I would say that this is best suited for somebody with a shorter torso. Uh, so if you are less than nine inches from the underbust to the lap here, I am closer to 10 and a half or 11 inches. So I have about two inches from the top of the corset up to my actual underbust area. And then I have another uh, maybe three inches from the bottom to the lap here. Now I don't have much of a lower pooch, but if you do have a, uh, a larger lower tummy or if you have a paniculus, um, then this corset is probably not going to pull in and up and, and support that because the corset cannot support what it doesn't touch. So if you have a very long torso that you want fully supported, or if you um, have special considerations, there are certain things that you want the corset to do for yourself, like holding in a lower tummy, then I would recommend uh, something a little bit longer. However, if you do have a very short torso, and especially if you have a little bit of a higher waistline, uh, this might be better suited for you. The fact that this corset is so short in the front and yet it has a bit of a higher back, it gives a kind of best of both worlds situation uh, in that it is short enough for almost everybody to be able to sit down in comfortably, yet it is not low backed like many other types of waspies and cinchers are. So you are going to get um, less spillover or muffin top uh, over here underneath the um, shoulder blades compared to if you were to wear a low backed corset. In terms of the silhouette, even though the mesh material is a, a relatively flexible and it has expanded a little bit, it hasn't expanded so much as to um, morph this corset from uh, a conical silhouette to a very round rib silhouette. And I think part of that is because it has so many um, boning channels in it, and the boning channels are rather wide. So it has retained its relatively conical rib cage here, and you can see that there is a pretty elegant uh, swooping over the hip. So it's not really like a square hip shelf, but it's not going completely down and pressing on the hip bones either. It is kind of going out a little bit and then wrapping down around the hip bone. So let's go to the tabletop portion of this review and I can show you the other details close up. 
So here is the Mesh Jolly Short Corset Laid Flat and for the materials. Obviously the mesh is a single layer so you can see it's open weave fishnet style netting with the hexagonal uh, weave to it and it has a little bit of give. Um, and then the boning channels are uh, two layers of black cotton twill. So in between the panels, straddling the um, panels to reinforce the seams here, you have uh, the double wide boning channels and that reinforces the assembly of the corset as well as providing a place for the bones to live. <laughs> this is what the Glamorous Corset label looks like and it's uh, just the same reversed on the other side. Uh, here's the fabric content and cleaning instructions. And the size is actually uh, uh, sewn onto both sides of the corset, right at the very top here. So on the left side and on the right side. And turning this corset to the side, it still has a six panel pattern. Um, the panels I'm counting as the mesh pieces that are in between the uh, boning channels here. So you can see panel one, two, three. Panel four is a little bit skinny, <laughs> as well as panel five. And here's panel six in the back right there. And while the corset's on its side here, you can appreciate in the pattern, um, the top edge here comes down underneath the bust line so it doesn't push up on the bust. And then it comes back up towards the back. So I sometimes call this like a cincher with a high back. Um, it's not extremely high, it's not like way up there, but the back can be uh, compared to the same length as some other standard length corsets out there. So um, a lot of people understand that the lower a back on a corset, the more likely there is to get uh, a little bit of like squish or muffin or spillover at the back. Um, this avoids that. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds in that this is six and a half inches at the princess seam. So it can fit most people who have a short torso, but it's not going to create a ton of muffin top in the back. And that top edge is kind of mirrored at the bottom edge as well. So it comes up so that it doesn't uh, dig into your lap when you sit down. But then it comes down rather abruptly here at panel three to cover the side of uh, the, the hip here. And then it kind of goes straight back from there. So um, even though this is a cincher, it does come down a little bit lower over the hips. Now that means that um, unlike say a short hipped waspy that goes right over the hip bone, you do have to pay more attention to the hip spring in this one to make sure that uh, it's not going to be too small or too big and flaring on you. Because if it's too small, then there's a possibility that this might pinch you. If it's too big, then it might flare on you like it did on me when I was modeling this corset. Um, however, with the mesh, because it is a little, it has a little bit more give to it, I feel that the hip spring in this version is a little bit more generous compared to the all cotton um, Jolie Waspy that I had reviewed in the past. Turning to the inside here, you can very plainly see the waist tape here. It is uh, one inch wide, made from grain ribbon. It's a full uh, width waist tape running from the center front here all the way to the center back. And it is on the inside of the panels, but it's still sandwiched in between um, the boning channels here. And the binding is made from strips of black cotton twill, um, machine stitched on both the outside and the inside. On the outside, you can see it is uh, stitched in the ditch. And on the inside, you can see that there is uh, a little bit of a lip here. Um, on the inside, they decided to just serge the end and not fold it over a second time to reduce bulk. And additionally, there are six garter tabs in this corset, three on each side. And this has a pretty wide modesty panel in the back. It's six inches wide. It's an unstiffened modesty panel, so um, it does not have any boning in it. It's attached to one side of the corset with a row of stitching. So if you don't like modesty panels, you can just take a seam ripper and remove this. The tags might probably come along with that, unfortunately. Um, and uh, it is finished in the same black cotton twill that uh, the boning channels and the binding is also made from. As well, there is a modesty placket extending out from the knob side of the busk here. It's a quarter inch wide and also finished in black cotton twill. The busk in this corset is just eight inches long and it's half an inch wide on each side with four loops and pins. The last two are a little bit closer together for a little bit more control over the tummy. Um, even though it is only half an inch wide on each side, it is actually a stainless steel busk because I took a, a sneaky peek on the, uh, the bone here and it's not a white uh, nylon dipped bone. It is actually a stainless steel bone in there. Uh, so it's a little bit less ferrous 
so it means it's less magnetic, but also um, it's a little bit stiffer compared to your standard width, width flexible busk. Additionally, there are two bones adjacent to the busk for a little bit of reinforcement, although from the feel of it, it seems that they're spiral steel bones and not flat steel, so I don't know how much um, actual reinforcement it's doing, but at least the thought was there. <laughs> and there are 26 bones total in this corset, 13 on each side. So uh, double boned on the boning channels, two, four, six, eight, ten. These are all quarter inch wide spiral steel bones. On uh, the back here, sandwiching the grommets, you have two uh, flat steel bones. These are also stainless steel, so they're a little bit less ferrous, but a little bit stiffer than your white nylon dipped bones. And additionally, there is that last uh, 13th bone on each side, right next to the busk there. Double it for the other side, and that's how you get 26. And here's a close-up of the grommets. There are surprisingly a lot of grommets in this corset. Um, there are 24 of them, 12 on each side, and they are set equidistantly apart, about uh, three quarters of an inch apart, as opposed to many other off-the-rack brands that space them an inch or even one and a quarter inch apart. Um, they are size double zero with a small to medium flange around them and finished in silver. And they seem to be holding in relatively well, especially considering that um, this is a mesh corset with less reinforcement. Um, that was one thing that I had alerted Rachel of Glamorous Corset to with some of the older style mesh corsets. And so it is possible that they bulked up the, the last panel here and uh, gave the grommets a little bit more to bite down on so that the grommets don't rip out. I'll continue to keep an eye on it and see if anything happens, but so far so good when it comes to this corset. And here's the underside of the grommet, so nice big, big washers. I like that the washers are even bigger than the top hat part of the grommet because then uh, it's less likely to pull out of the fabric here. Um, most of them have rolled nicely, a couple of splits here and there uh, due to the machine, but they don't catch on the laces because the laces are pretty abrasion resistant. And once again, I'm not seeing um, damage of the fabric around the grommets here. They're still holding in pretty securely. And the laces in this corset are your typical workhorse laces. So black, a quarter inch wide, flat nylon shoelace style laces. They have a little bit of springiness to them, but as you wear the corset in more and more, that springiness should stretch out and kind of um, go more taut. And there, you can tell that there is a ton of laces in here. So if I fold the modesty panel back, this is how wide the laces are when you expand it as far as it'll go. So this accommodates a 14 inch lacing gap. Now, I would probably never recommend a 14 inch waist reduction for somebody, even if their natural waist is say like 50 inches. Um, but just so you know, there are plenty of laces that come with this corset. And so you should never have a problem like getting the corset to wrap around yourself or lace up because um, you will always have enough slack in the back. The Jolie mesh corset is available in three styles currently. The single layer mesh corset that you see here obviously and uh, if you prefer a more sturdy structured um, multi-layer 100% cotton sort of workhorse style corset then Glamorous Corset provides this as well in black cotton or beige cotton. It's $84 on their website and uh, it's available in waist sizes 18 inches all the way up to 40 inches. And this concludes my review of the Mesh Jolie Short Corset. So I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to click that like button down there as it helps support the channel and it helps this algorithm do its magic. If you have any comments or questions about this corset or Glamorous Corset in general, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you. And if you already own this corset, leave a comment down below and let us know what you think of it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for another video. Bye.